some other filler episodes are. You know, like the Freddy Heroes of Arson stage. So you're saying after Kanon betrays his fellow Blade Shield in that following episode where they have a lot of the symbolism with the rain and the crows and the overly symbol. And also the, the constant flashback of each character and having to remember that they kill a random person that is trying to kill them. Each one of them has the exact same flashback that they thought of something that what they have I don't think the Blade Children really had much skill, and it was interesting where they went from villains to protagonists of the show. They really went from bad guys to good guys, and I think it was a little stretched. It was kind of forced. It was too fast. There really wasn't a... Uh, although, one novel exception being uh, Rio, the, the, the small girl, I think Rio, she really went from... Uh, being evil and having no remorse when she killed the uh, teacher early on in the series. Then um, she has the conversations with Ayumo, and she kind of develops a bond, and at, at one point she's actually hugging him after she loses the uh, find your own stuff challenge. They both said they would want to marry Ayumo. Both of them. Both the girl that follows him around and the girl. You fell in love with him first book so. Romance. Uh, let's talk about it first in anime in general, and then specifically with Spyro. Do you think romance plays an important role in anime? Yeah. Or it's just a sort of fan service to try to get the teenage girls to watch the show? Let's go to you first of all. I believe that every anime has at least an anime that's mostly targeted to the male. Uh, just because, well, without anime, without like a love interest, anime seems kind of dry. Character development. Yeah. Aside from character development, what are, what are the other benefits of having love in the series, which are, besides what I mentioned about having young girls and perhaps young men watch the show in Loy's case, a lot of the fan service was the relationship between Kiono and Ayumu, with romance being thoroughly discussed. Let's move on to where is Kiyotaka? 
you think Kiyotaka's only being in flashbacks helped the series and added to the mystery and him being too far away aspect, or do you, th do you think that they should have included him in the series? Well, I think they probably should have included him because the whole time they're just going on and on about how the little brother is trying to be the big brother. They had uh, Kiyotaka uh, be not a part of the anime series because it, it makes it more dramatic on how the, the younger brother has to be more like the elder brother. On a side note here, I, I think that there was a prequel to the manga, and there should have been a prequel to the anime as well. And we don't get any background on Kiyotaka whatsoever, we don't know what he is aside from Kiyotaka should have had and more of an the series aside from giving hope to the Elder Blade children. The ending of the series is going to be what we're going to jump to next, and did it end well? Did it end poorly? Thoughts? The Blade children, you never really get who the hell they are. We are the Blade children. Cliffhangers. Do you think they could have successfully continued this anime with a R2 sort of thing? I believe they really could have continued it. Back to the ending. <laughs> the ending, it really... The hopelessness aspect. I don't think it should have ended that way. Most, I mean, I know most anime ends in, you know, happy endings. It has a happy ending, but... I think this is one where it should have, because we were trying to find out if Ayumu can help the Blade children or not, and we find out he gives up, basically. The Finone says, I saw a egg to the feet, or something to that effect, and so basically we're getting the ideas from this movie, the idea that Ayumu failed. Why did Kiyotaku go after the Blade children? Why is he their hero and leave them with all leave the Blade children? with all these important things and this whole thing to believe in Ayumu. Why did he do that? No one really used like a hint of sexism and portraying her as selfish and she didn't really seem selfish in a lot of things, but she really felt like you know, she made the viewer felt like feel like Ayumu was important to her and then he completely rebuts that with saying she's selfish and she doesn't even argue. She doesn't even argue the point. This is gonna be the final topic for this edition. What was the point of Rio? How relevant was Rio to the series? And Rio, if you forget, is the short, gray-haired girl. Was Rio important to the series? Yeah. 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 In the former half of the series, she's instrumental in testing him, whereas in the latter, she is irrelevant. Like he said, a hassle. She's more of a problem. She's more of a liability than an asset. She's not. She's she's irrelevant to the second half of the series, in my opinion. Josuke, he was another. Except it was like the first eighth of the series. Where Kiyosuke is important to the series in like the first eight or four, where he uh, has the keys. He, he finds out he comes with Rio's wacky and then he just doesn't do anything at all. He found it odd and perverse that Kiyosuke and Ryoko had a sort of romance where they're clones, they're completely blood relatives, and they have like one of these children. <laughs> they didn't actually say that they're clones, but. Again, I, I mean, you really can't enjoy the anime unless you read the manga. And They're technically the same person. That's when it hit me that they never once said Blade Child. They always go, you are one of the Blade children. I am one of the Blade children. We are the cursed children, not meant to live. Chris's thoughts on our thoughts. First, Kiyosuke, do you, do you think he had any relevance to, to the show? Do you think they should have developed or cut him out? He was originally trying to test by you, though. Trying to kill you, and then came Rio with Black. Lucas Davis, I'm LT Tran, and I'm Jake Rose. Thank you for watching the first episode of Anime, and stay tuned. Next week, we'll be talking about Helsing. I've been working this great shift, and I need yeah, yeah. I wish I could buy me a spaceship.